Let's see, so I dried this. I go to the next layer of the, uh, the you know, the banana stock tip things. And I, I, I guess one point I want to make is that, you know, I'm certainly artificially creating the notion of one color stops and one color starts, you know, the banana. But as you can see, that's, that's not exactly how it happens, how it works. I mean, there's, a, there's always sort of transitional things going on and things reflecting against each other. Um, so these are definitely, you know, sort of overarching ideas of what something will be. And we'll keep, keep understanding more about how one kind of fades into another or, or doesn't and what effect that has. And, um, I didn't really need to wipe that away now that I think about it. But because um, I'm going to mix up <laughs> some more uh, of the Azo yellow and some corn acridone burnt orange. And I want to start graying, dulling it out. So there's a couple ways I could do that. I could start just introducing some indigo, which is sort of like introducing a black, but um, I want to introduce the, uh, the, the so a little bit of blue, which is the complement of orange. So um, it will start making it a less, less sort of pure, happy orangey brown and more of a doled out grayish brown. So that's a fairly large subject uh, color. That was a bit of a silly thing to say, but um, I'm using the peacock blue and you can sort of tell it's, it's introducing a little bit of green in there too. Um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but if I didn't want it quite that green, I could bring in a little bit more of the Conacridone Burnt Orange. Let's go with that. Let's see, I'm going to um, do this. And, mm, mm, okay. I do know sometimes it's, it seems hard to keep track, and it's always Helpful to identify both the shape you're going to be working on and and what you're going to be doing with that shape. If you're going to be what you're going to be doing value-wise, lighter to darker, or what you're going to be doing hue color-wise, yellow to orange, for example, what you may be doing temperature-wise, something with a little more orange and yellow in it, or something with a little more blue in it. The first being warmer and the latter being cooler. So actually that that's kind of, a, it was a little bit too green at first, and that was coming from well, several things, the yellow and the, the peacock blue mixing, but it was a little bit heavy on the blue, giving it, it a, a greenish feel, and I would consider that a cooler feel, a little bit more blue in there, and I wanted to warm it up a little bit, so I brought in a little bit more of the Quinacridone burnt orange that has that's a, a warmer color, more orangey. Already has sort of yellow in it. Um, let's see what are we gonna do with, with this guy. This this is, is turning out fun. Um, I think I may have done this, but sometimes it's when you're doing grays and yeah, I, I really like what's going on here. Um, it's fun to just kind of mix up 
whatever the heck you happen to have in your palette, your extra color that you can uh, kind of play with. It's not going to make quite enough color or quite where I was thinking of going. Where I was thinking of going was um, was not a whole lot darker, but I wanted to, um, so I'm going to mix in a little bit more indigo once again just to make it. Um, heck, maybe maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. Mm. Um, play with that. Have fun. The uh, oh, I um, and so let's see. Yeah, once again, my shape is going to be kind of this and, and this and this and this. And I want to keep this wash kind of maybe a little watery than I might make it otherwise. Partly because I wanted to illustrate one of the very cool things, or, or just to, to, to help get a, a better sense of what it means to paint with transparent watercolors versus opaque oils and acrylics, both of which can be made to be much more transparent than they inherently are, so it's not like it's impossible to create transparency effects. But um, what I love about watercolor is when you have one effect happen happening over um, two shapes, and I'm saying two shapes by that rectangle and that rectangle. So we, we get to we get to see sort of that this this bloom was going all the way across here, but we're layering um, some transparent color onto this part, and and we can so we can still see through. We can see the effect of that bloom going through that whole shape. Sometimes it's exactly what you don't want, but oftentimes I I think that's what gives watercolor part of its really cool personality. Um, kind of a similar, yeah, maybe, maybe a similar, not, not as, as clear going on down here, but just that whole notion of the appearance of one layer showing through um, is something that I think is really fun to play with. I'm just uh, improvising right now. I'm putting a little bit more ultramarine blue and trying to not worry that it's really not that consistent as far as water wise and may um, yeah it's probably not going to dry um, so cleanly or wash but that's part of the point for this okay